Hey, what's going on? Tony Scott here, Smooth R&B 105.7 Studio, uh, in my in my show, as always, The Smooth Ride Home. And it happens Monday through Friday from 2 to 7 here in Dallas. And uh, tomorrow's the first day of summer. Look at that. It'll be. I noticed last night that the sun, it was like 10 minutes to 9 and the sun was still out. It was. It, I mean, it was starting to get dark, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, wow. So I mean, it's like tomorrow's the longest day of the year. It's going to get dark like around 1130 tomorrow night. <laughs> I'm just saying. But uh, we should be, I think, at 100 on... Friday, I think temperature's going to be like a hundred. So, summer in North Texas, right? Uh, time to look at Tony's T. Some entertainment headlines that got my attention today. Uh, Jesse Williams from Grey's Anatomy has been, or he was paying his 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 ex wife uh, Aaron Drake Lee like thirty three thousand a month, right? And uh, she went to court saying she needed more money, and uh, she got it because now he's paying a total of one hundred thousand dollars a month in spousal and child support. You know. Now, some people say that's way too much money for two kids. And, uh, well, you know what? You may have a point, but it's it's never about that. And we talked about this before. I've talked to lots of lawyers who have told me that it's about the child being entitled to the same lifestyle that the parent who's paying the child support uh, lives, you know? And I, I get that. I mean, if 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 I had to pay like that, I mean, I would want my child to, 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 to have the best of the best. You know, if I'm, if I'm rocking millions of dollars, I would want that. I'm just saying. Uh, Jesse makes $535,000 a month. So paying $100,000, uh, pro- probably, probably not going to hurt him too much, right? But uh, that's there's that. So Magic Johnson cried when his son EJ came out. EJ and Cookie Johnson, Magic's wife and EJ's mother, were on uh, Jada Pinkett Smith's Red Table Talk on Facebook, and she and he, he said when he came out, Magic cried because that was not the life he wanted for his son. Uh, but they, you know, he accepted it, and they have a great relationship these days. He always talks about how proud he is of age uh, of EJ. K. Michelle says she's done with love and hip hop. It's a wrap. They've been running promos saying they're gonna, you know, talk about her butt implants and how they went bad for her and things like that. She goes, you know what? I quit already. They they. Uh, reach so much they lose the truth and i'm cool so she's busy promoting kimberly her album uh real how i mean loving hip-hop hollywood that's all the same july 23rd but that's a monday night at seven on vh1 remember when the milwaukee bucks basketball player sterling brown got uh, tasered and arrested well he's now suing the city of milwaukee and the milwaukee police department uh this incident happened on january 26th he was parked in a spot designated for disabled people and as he was being cited by police for the infraction, he was taken down because he would not remove his hands from his pockets as ordered. He was also tased during the altercation and was eventually jailed for a brief time. Now, he was, like I said, he was never charged with a crime. And he played in a game with his face bruised up and stuff just hours later. Uh, police chief of the Milwaukee Police Department, Alfonso Morales, apologized to Sterling Brown last month. Three officers were disciplined in this whole thing with suspensions ranging from 2 to 15 days. Another eight officers were ordered to undergo remedial training in professional communications. There was another incident that happened. Where did it happen? I just had it in front of me. He, uh, uh, A kid uh, ran out of a car and cops shot him in the back three times and killed him. Pittsburgh, I think. They say there were guns in the car. Uh, they had just left a, 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 some other incident, the car with the young men in it. But he ran and he got shot in the back three times, killed by a cop who was just sworn in the day this happened. As an officer, he was on his first beat, and this is what happens. Man, uh, an elementary school dropped their Confederate name in favor of President Obama. Uh, the Richmond, Virginia school board voted 6-1 to one to rename J.E.B. Stewart Elementary School to Barack Obama Elementary School. J.E.B. Stewart was a Confederate general. Uh, the lone holdout in the 6-1 to one vote wanted more local names to be considered, while another board member said he hopes they're done renaming buildings and can start renovating them. Richmond, Virginia, by the way, is the former capital of the Confederate States of America. And now they have a school named after Barack Obama. And President Trump signed an executive order today stopping the separation of families at the border. The president says we're keeping families together, but we have to keep our border strong. Now, here's where it gets kind of like, okay, well, what? Because the the children, the 2,300 children currently being held are going to be held for a while. Because my understanding is they didn't have anything in place to release these children. So there's there's, there's all kinds of things going on there, and uh, they can't, they, I mean, they're not going to get out tomorrow. They're not going to get out by the weekend. They're not going to get out probably next week. It's going to be a while. Uh, the president had said that he could not 
rescind that using an executive order. He actually probably could have just made a phone call, but he said he could not do an executive order, and that's exactly what he did today. Some people say that his, you know, his daughter Iv- Ivanka, his daughter, is the only one that he'll listen to. Only female he will listen to. He's not listening to his wife. He's listening to Ivanka. And she was bothered by it, and she spoke to him, and this is support supposedly what went down, and he, and he changed his mind. But from what I saw on television today, he took a huge L today. It was a huge L because he said he would not do it. And he, you know, and he pretty much said that if he, were gonna, if he, if he, he would only do it if he got the wall. He didn't get the wall, so there's that. So you guys want to comment on anything I talked about? Something I didn't talk about? All uh, you have to do is reference what you're talking about when you put your comments up, so I know which comment goes with which story. That would help out a lot. But uh, let's get to it and say hi to Roberta, and also uh, Tina's in the house. Uh, Catherine says she's moving to Houston. You're moving to Houston from Dallas? Oh, man. Well, uh, if you see a child who looks like me, that will be my daughter. <laughs> Say hi to her. <laughs> her name is Adrian. So there's that. Oh, man. Uh, De- uh, Diane, I'm doing very good. Uh, Weekend Cedric was fantastic. I appreciate that. You're in Norwalk, Connecticut. Samuel Pride is way up there. Way up there. Uh Roberta says that uh, the president doesn't care. He has to remove this jacked up policy. No, he's not going to remove remove the policy. It's zero tolerance. So now people who come across the border illegally, they get caught with their families. They're still going to go through the process, but the families are going to stay together now. That's really the only difference. He's, he's still going to stop people from entering the country illegally. He's just uh, he's just going to keep them all together now. That That's essentially what's going to happen. So there's that. Uh, but no, I mean, you know, I don't. I wouldn't expect him to change. He he doesn't like to admit he's wrong, and he was trying everything he could today except saying I was wrong. He says, you know, compassion comes to mind, and you know, we want to keep the families together. And it was very hard looking at the the images and stuff. You know, he was saying all these kinds of things instead of just saying, you know what, I messed up, man. <laughs> I me- I messed up. If he'd have said that, his numbers would have gone up because people would have said, you see. You see, he's a human being who admits when he makes a mistake. And his numbers would have gone up, but his ego won't let him do that. So there's that. So, uh, Mr. Trump is the worst. Yeah, well, you know, man, yeah, well, yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> well, yeah there, there is that. Word is that Michael Cohen, the president's lawyer, or maybe former lawyer, is about this close to flipping on the president which means uh we should get ready for something outrageous to happen because he'll want he's a master of diverting of changing the changing the narrative he's a, he's a master of changing what gets into the headlines because he'll do something or say something outrageous will piss people off and then the and then the michael cohen thing will kind of like you know go away the news cycle and uh and and uh you know it works out the way he wants it so Samuel used to, Samuel up in uh, Connecticut used to listen. He used to live in Lancaster or, or Lancaster. Somebody told me here it's Lancaster. <laughs> I was like, well, it's what? <laughs> Lancaster. <laughs> wait, wait, say it again. <laughs> a, a baking powder. I'm sorry. Corey, I mean Cedric, I'm doing good, man. Doing very good. The truth is uh, never in the president. Well, yeah. That's that's. But, you know, one thing he did, he did say that was true. And I think this goes back to before he was, you know, when he said a long time ago that he could shoot somebody in the head uh, in uh, in New York and, and get away and, and the people would still vote for him. Now that now that is true. That's a truism. That's a Trump and Trumpism. And that is true. What he said that then was is very true because they will follow him in the hell. <laughs> they will follow this man into hell and uh tony says the flip that flip that i spoke about with michael cohen oh it's coming it's coming you know uh let's see uh patrice thank you for saying that uh you need the breakfast crew back in st louis yeah that's not gonna happen so <laughs> you realize with you that that ain't gonna happen so i'm sorry though no no i think uh no, that's not. It's not gonna happen. I love St. Louis, though. Don't get me wrong. I think I love St. I love the people of St. Louis more than I love St. Louis because the people of St. Louis are just awesome people. So, uh, 
You're going to say hi to my mini me when you're in Houston, Catherine? Okay, <laughs> do that. Do that, yeah. she's uh, She looks just like me, only she's prettier. <laughs> You know, but she's a she's the one who uh, said I had Bible hair. Is that what she came? She coined that phrase for me, Bible hair. So, uh, yeah. But uh, so today, uh, my youngest Maria went and uh, selected her dorm, and she was very excited. And it turns out that uh, it's gonna like be like a shared kind of thing. So like another suite of two girls, they'll share a bathroom. The four of them. And they all, they all know each other, which is pretty cool, I think. So there's that. So I'm, I was, she was so, when, when my kids are happy about anything, I'm, when they get excited, it makes me so happy. It, it does. There's been times where I've actually like sat in my car and kind of, kind of cried a little bit because they are, they were excited about something. And that just, that just, it's everything to me to see my kids happy. It's like, wow. Yes. Uh, the last year and a half, Diana says, it feels like a straight nightmare that won't end. Well, why is that? <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, you lo love the station. I appreciate you saying that. Uh, tried to win something. You even talked to Steve Harvey and Tommy. Yeah, but well, you know what? You don't call You don't call our request line to talk to Tommy or Steve because they're not here. So they're, it's a national show. And uh, they're, they're on the West Coast. So there's a number to call i don't know i don't know what it is offhand i'm sure it's on the website or steveharvey.com you can get that and uh, information the phone number where to, where to call and stuff like that but you won't you won't get them by calling our request line that's for sure so but i appreciate the kind words linda very nice of you to say that that you love the station and everything our station is very unique and it's very it's very good it's a very good sounding radio station if i say so myself so uh there's that so uh let's see what else is happening here uh, Melania Trump apparently called the Secret Service on Jane Fonda's brother, Peter Fonda, because Peter Fonda tweeted they, they should rip Melania and Donald Tr uh, Trump's son, Barron, from her arms and stick him in a cage like they're doing these other kids. And apparently that kind of scared Melania, so she called the Secret Service. So I'm pretty sure Peter Fonda will be getting a visit from the Secret Service. Peter Fonda's got to be like in the late 70s by now and probably has really no dams to give. You ever notice how older people, really, the older they get, they got no dams to give? Like my father, my father died at 85, and probably when he turned like 72, 73, he just turned his filter off and was like, you know what, whatever. <laughs> you know, whatever. You know, now he was still very, very respectful around my mom and my sisters, but when he was around me, Oh, he let it fly, man. But he always kind of did. But it really came with a quickness, you know. And, I mean, he called me weak and, and uh... <laughs> oh, Cedric, thank you, man. I appreciate you saying that. I, I, You know what? I don't think I'm the best dad, but I, but you know what? I will debate anybody about the love I have for my children. I love all my children. I'm crazy about all of them. And they know it. They know it. I tell them all the time that I love them. And the interesting thing is my father, my father never told me that he loved me. Never. Right. But I knew that he loved me. Isn't that crazy? You know, it's like, it's like he, he never said it. He never said because he was, he was that, he was that dude, that tough old school dude. Right. And it really, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the deal is with that. And so he wasn't, and he, he, he might've told my sisters he loved him, but he never, he wasn't going, he wasn't going to tell another man. <laughs> That he loved him. That just wasn't going to happen, right? And I think I was kind of like the same way. But my, my best friend, uh, Mark, uh, you know, one time told he said, I love you, man. And ever since then, I've been comfortable telling him. And I would tell my dad that I loved him all the time. And, and, uh, and I've always told my kids, you know, Lois, love that name. Lois is checking in. How you doing? You know, but uh, no, nah, man, everybody, everybody, you know, if, if you don't love your kids, there's either something wrong with your kids or something wrong with you. Most of the time it's you, you know, but, uh, this, uh, you know, that's why it always breaks my heart when I see kids being thrown into drama that's created by their parents, you know, and when my first marriage was ending and my oldest daughter, the one in Houston was a little kid, you know, my mother used to always say, y'all need to find peace. You guys need to find peace for her sake. And it was hard to do. And it really wasn't until my wife found someone else that she was able to move on. And became, a, 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 you know, to me, we became very civil toward each other and uh, never had an issue with him, uh, the guy she was with and stuff, her husband. We never, never, there was never an issue between him and I. It was always fine and good and everything. So, uh, 
And Lois says, you know what? Your dad didn't either, huh? But I knew he loved you. Your mother never told you? I don't remember my, mo my mother telling me. She tells me. She tells me now. My mom says it all the time now. But then I don't, I don't remember. But I wasn't really paying attention. You know, when you're a kid, you don't pay attention to those, those kinds of things. You know, they love you. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're going to eat that? <laughs> Cedric, thanks, man. Appreciate that. Hey, Robin from South Carolina. You know, it's kind of like one of those things where, like, you, you, you know, when you're, I mean, when you're a kid, you don't, you don't, you, you don't care, you know? And even now, with all the technology, the smartphones and tablets and all that, kids got less damn to give about anything that's going on unless it's on Instagram in front of them. That, 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 that's just the truth. It's, it, it is. So you really have to work for their attention, you know? Diana says, my mom is 80 years old. That's a blessing. She's got no problem saying what she thinks and feels at any time. Yeah. So the filter, well, now how old was she when she turned the filter off? She was probably in her mid seventies, maybe. She just turned it completely off. It was like whatever, <laughs> you know. Uh, King Kings Tree, South Carolina, Francina, Francina McGill. Yes, how you doing? Uh, and you know what, Roberta, you make a good point. Actions sometimes speak louder than words. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes. But see, I always knew I was loved because my father always took care of me. He always took care of me. You know, it's like. You know, when I was a kid and I wanted a baseball glove, he bought me a baseball glove and I wanted an aluminum bat and I had one of the first aluminum bats, you know, and I had that. And, and I mean, he didn't buy everything I wanted. No, but uh, two things stand out. One, I, I've always loved baseball. I've had a love affair with baseball forever. And when I was a kid, we had one TV, right? It was the, the one, that, the, the floor, the floor, the floor model, right? The floor model TV, not the one with the stereo, just the TV. And it went out. And the All-Star Game, and I always look forward to the All-Star Game, right? And the All-Star Game was coming on in like three days or something. It was, it, was, it was fairly soon that it was coming on. My dad went to the store and bought a 19-inch black and white TV, right? It was black and white. The other TV that went out was color TV. He bought a black and white TV, and he mounted it in the kitchen so that I could watch the All-Star Game, Right? I never forgot that, that he did that. He did that. And then when I was older, I was like, I don't know, 17 years old, maybe 18 years old. I had my first car and the transmission went out. I had a 1972 Toyota Carina. I think they only make Carinas one year. And uh, I mean, I had I had it all fixed. I had it was painted candy apple red. I had put a sunroof in it, had the mirrored windows right? Had the mag wheels. I was rolling on like tens at the time, you know, but I, they were, they were mag wheels. Right. And, you know, uh, had the stereo with the booming speakers, you know, I mean, I had, that thing was rocking. Right. And the transmission went out and I remember my dad came home from work. He worked, he, he didn't work Saturdays a lot, but sometimes he would, and he'd get like double time or whatever, whatever. But he came home and he gave me like $600 and says, go get your transmission fixed. I was like, wow, what, 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 <laughs> I never forgot that, man, my, my father did that for me, and it was like, wow, right, so I knew his actions, he took care of his son, he took care of his son, that's what he did, and I remember being a little boy, I don't know if you do it now, but when I, you know, I, I, I'd get a bad cold or something, he would rub the Vicks on my chest, I remember those were like bonding moments and stuff like that. And he was like, because he would like rub my chest. He goes, where's the hair at, man? Where's the hair on your chest? You ain't got no, where you, where's, <laughs> I was like seven. He was like, where's the hair on your chest, man? You got no hair on your chest. I can't believe you don't have no hair on your chest. <laughs> that was, that was my pops, man. That was him. You know, Robin understands what I'm saying. My, my father never said it either, but we knew because he took care of us. Yeah, you know, those old school dudes, man, they just, they didn't, they didn't say it. They showed it. And they showed it by their actions and their responsibilities. And that's kind of like how they, how that worked. You know, now we kind of do both. At least I do, you know, working hard to take care of my children and telling them that I love them like constantly, constantly. And I think one of the things I'm most proud of about them is when they were, from the time they were little, when, when it, it was dinner time, or when I would see them for the first time, you know, after school and all that, how was your day? I would ask them, how was your day? What happened at school today? How was your day? How was your day? So now, you know, uh, they always say, how was your day, dad? 
what happened today at work, you know? And so they asked me, right? And they got that from me because I, I always asked them. And uh, that was kind of a cool thing. So, you know, Brenda, Brenda's finally here. Brenda, we've been waiting for you. Diana says, well, to be honest, never really had one about certain things. But as she, as she has gotten older, she is crystal clear and laser sharp with her words. Oh, so mom never really had a filter about certain things. I got you. I see what you're saying. Yeah. But she's crystal clear with her thoughts now. And that's good. If her thoughts are crystal clear at 80 years old, that's good. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good thing. My father was like that, right? My, fa my father, uh, the last week of his life, he was in the hospital, and he was in a hospital bed, and they had this, this thing that hung down, and my father could no longer stand. His legs, it just they just gave out on him, right? But his upper body, right? So he would like get, grab that thing with one arm and pull himself up and move himself over on the bed and lower himself down. We were like, <laughs> this man's 85 years old. How's he doing that, right? But his upper body was was intact, 85. I mean, he still he had guns, man. You know, he had all that. It just that his legs decided, you know, they were they were retiring early from him. And uh, but nah, he that upper body strength. It was like, hey, I know, Meta, how you doing? We we we, uh, we would. <laughs> I would marvel at that because here I am, you know, considerably younger than him, and I didn't have that kind of upper body strength. Still don't. <laughs> Brenda's been busy at church, so you, you get a pass because you've been doing the Lord's work. Yes. Deborah, how you doing? Yeah, but it, it was it's like one of those things where, where you know, my dad was like, uh, I mean, just, just so many great memories like that. You know, we'd be in the backyard playing catch. And then him and my mom would be in the backyard playing catch. And we had this big yard in the back uh, when I was like, you know, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 years old. We had this huge yard in the back. It was big. And they would play catch with a hard ball. And my father would throw hard. He would throw I mean, he would be smoking. I mean, he was like Nolan Ryan kind of thing going, right? And my mom would catch it. You know, and one time he threw like a sinker. And it was like, it, it, it kind of like... You know, and it hit her in the ankle. She had this big knot on her ankle, but she didn't want to stop. He was like, nah, 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 let's stop. She goes, no, keep throwing. He was like, nah, you've got a knot on your ankle. She goes, throw, throw the ball. <laughs> so they went in about another 20 minutes and would throw. And the only reason why they would stop was because it was getting dark. You know, and it was like getting dark outside. And, you know, you can't throw a hard ball in the dark. So, you know, they would stop. But, yeah, you know. That is fantastic, Diana. Uh, she, she is uh, 80 and she's your role model. And see, as much as I admired like pro athletes and, and you know, uh, you know, back in the day when I was a kid, my role model was always my father. He was always my father. You know, it was never, it was never, you know, I wish I could be like, oh, whoever. I, that wasn't me, Dr. J or kareem or somebody like that you know back back in the day but no it was always dad dad was always my role model he was always the blueprint he was the one you know he'd get home i'd see him kiss my mother you know when he got home and when he got ready to go for work if i were up that early he you know they would kiss goodbye and stuff like that i just saw that love you know now am i am i that affectionate now uh no i'm not i'm not it's just it's, i have to take the l on that you know, and I feel bad sometimes because my wife is so endearing, but uh, that's not me. So I'm, so, I'm so, sorry, baby. <laughs> I'm so sorry. So anyway, let me get ready to let you guys go. Uh, appreciate you guys uh, hanging out with me. Follow me on my, all my social media, Tony Scott Media, except where on YouTube, it's this and that media, youtube.com slash this and that media. Subscribe to the channel. doesn't cost anything, but it really helps me in my quest to 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 build the empire so that's uh, pretty good and uh, have a great evening and uh looks like the rain has moved out might be some rain overnight but not so much here in north texas probably but to have a great night and hopefully uh we'll talk again